In this video, I propel you to go deeper into Christ, to have a greater dimension of intimacy with Him. Enjoy and please subscribe. Beyond what we can fathom or ever even really understand in the natural law, but in the spirit, all revelation is revealed, the secrets, the mysteries, the darkness. Oh, my King, you are majestic, you are beautiful. We thank you for your presence. Thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, sweet, precious, majestic, beautiful, Holy Spirit, powerful. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua, for all that you've done, your blood. Thank you. Thank you. The dimensions of your blood, the light of your blood that we step into and we begin to operate outside of time and space. Yes. Because of who we are in you. The fact that we are seated in you in heavenly places. The fact that we are the fullness of who you are. It's just beyond what we can even fathom, Father. Thank you for Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And then, Father, your comfort, your judgment, your justice. That which you, which you reflect, that which you pour into us. It is awesome, my King. We thank you and honor you for it. Thank you, Father. Thank honor you, Yahweh. You. Yes. Thank you, Yahweh. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 How are you guys doing? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. And God good. He's so good. Yes. I mean, I've been so, getting so drunk lately that I, I can't see for the first 10 minutes. I might as well just keep, keep my eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> like I have to hold this thing tighter every time I stand here. And I pull skew because my, you know, I'm not balanced out. So I need to put the mic down and hold with both hands so I don't fall over. Okay, but... Uh, over the last couple of weeks, if you guys can remember, we've been with the laws of Zion. We have done the laws of sacrifice. Am I right? Amen. We've done the laws of lordship, kingship, and sonship. Yes. Right? Yep. We've done the Lord, laws of wisdom, and that's it. Right. So tonight we're going to do the laws of um, legislation. And uh, I'll see how it goes, but we're probably going to stick to that. We still need to, need to do the law of harmony and resonance, time and space, the law of trading. And of course, we've done trading before. It'll be very much the same type of teaching, but at a higher, from a, li a higher perspective. And then, of course, the law of chancellorship. Mm. Okay. And the law of chancellorship goes with the very first scripture that we read that goes with the... Um, the 12 laws of Zion and of Jerusalem. And this is, it says, walk in my ways, and if you will perform my services, then you will also govern my house and have charge of my courts. A chancellor is in charge of the courts. All right. So it's the understanding of the growth that the father expects of us as sons and daughters to go up to into. Right? So it's an exciting time. So tonight, I want to pay the, as much attention to... Um, Legislation is possible. Now, if you, can, if you just want to think back, we have touched on legislation right through all of the school because really it's part of the Melchizedek order. It's part of who we are. It's part of what we have been doing already. There's much legislation taking place. Now, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the things the Father has taught me to do and how it's been done, but I don't want you to think that it really has anything to do with me. This is my section. That is what I've written on my scroll. There's uh, in the same stuff in the same states that I have authority, the same states that I work in and operate in. There's multiple uh, sons and daughters doing different things in the same states that just basically adds to what I'm doing. All right. Okay, so when I say things like I slayed a dragon and then this, this happened and that happened and this changed, there was much to be done for me to get to that place mm -hmm. by other sons and daughters, other saints that has occupied a very similar space in the spirit than what's been allocated to me. All right. right. Our scrolls determine the things that we are allowed to operate in and things we are allowed to do. And again, we, uh, this is not a, I can go get a handbook and start reading the things I want to have an understanding of. This is, this is understanding and meditating on the Word of God that written, the Bible, and then understanding and perceiving the living, going into the fullness of that which was spoken, and reminding yourself that that which is spoken is not written which means I can understand that there's much more that was spoken, mm -hmm. right? There's much more that was done. Yep. There's much more that 
is in the living that we can ever perceive. And we cannot bind our God, which is an infinite, almighty God, to one book. Come on, that's good. Okay, and especially because he said, now I love the word of God, so don't misunderstand me. I'm not, not defying it in any way, fashion, form. But he did make a statement that we need to begin to perceive. He said that he, we will do greater things than what he did. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we're going to do things that he didn't do, then what he written down or what he had his people write down will not be in this book that we call the Bible. Right. Amen. Okay, and in the same breath, remind yourself that Yeshua's ministry, that which was seen, mm -hmm. was probably only between 10 and 5%. Come on. And that's what was written down, that's what we know, that's what we can perceive. But the unseen... That which happened in the spirit was probably between 90 and 95 percent of his entire ministry. Come on, come on. Right, there's too many occasions where he went up into the mountains. Where if you understand the premises where he was at, there was no mountains. All right. Right, and the Bible does not lie. So he went into the spirit, he went into the mountain of the Lord. Yeah. Right, and of course he comes back saying, I only do what I see my father do. Yeah. So there's understanding in our, in our, in our subconscious that he had to go to where his father was to see what he was doing. Yes. Now, am I also, we have to understand that his father wasn't walking around in heaven healing the sick. Come on. Because then he sees his father do that and then comes back in the earth and does the same. No, he goes into the heavens and sees what his father does in character, in person, in personality. Yeah. And remind yourself in the same Come breath on. On. that it is that life, that Zoe life, mm -hmm. God life, that he sees, perceives, understands, has revelation of, then legislate back into the earth. It's the legislation that caused the miracles. It's the legislation that caused all the things that he did, the supernatural. Because it's him beginning to understand and perceive the things he saw his father do, which means he saw who his father was. Yeah. So if you see what your father does and who your father is, then you legislate that into the earth. Amen. But of course, you do that in mature sonship. You do that in perception and revelation as you walk deeper and deeper with it. So the law of legislation tells you basically that you need to begin to understand who you are in Christ so that which you are destined to do and become can be done and do or done. Done and done. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm very excited. Uh, I think there's an excessive change and ignite that's taking place in the spirit. I want to share some things before I start teaching. And uh, it might take a while, it might not, because every time I share it, it increases. Every time I share it, I've gone back into it and I've seen more things. Um, and of course, you know that that is the law of encounters, right? Mm. You always go back into the encounter because every time you go back in, there's more for you to see. see. Why? Amen. Because I go in the first time and I can only see what I can perceive. Yeah. I yeah. go in the second time, I don't have to look at what I've already seen. I can begin to look around for what I have not perceived yet. Yeah. And every time I do that, it increases because there's so much. And of course, it's not just an encounter. It's the Father wanting to bring you to a place of revelation regarding what's taking place. Because what is happening is you're probably walking with one of the seven spirits and the legislation that's taking place in the earth is done through assignment. So you need to understand it's going to be in part until it becomes complete and full Good. and in its fullness. All right. So in Marpa on Sunday, uh, we were just busy worshipping. Now, they, we don't have a worship team like that. It is a different meeting. Um, it's awesome. It's a very powerful bunch, a bunch of people. But we just have a couple of songs, maybe two or three songs, maybe 15, 20 minutes at max that we worship. And it's really, again, just soaking, just going into his presence and spending time with him. And uh, so as I was busy sitting there, I was just had my eyes closed. I was sitting, I wasn't lying down. And um, I kept on seeing light coming down. 12 to be exact. Um, I knew that it was cars driving past because first of all it was light and so every time I opened my eyes to see what it was there was nothing there until I saw a car pass and as the car passed the light and the sun reflected on its windows and it felt like a, a light dropped out of the sky. Cool. And that was obviously significant because after I saw these 12 lights, it wasn't 12 lights, 12 cars, um, but as I saw these in the spirit, these 12 beings dropping out of the sky. The Father took me into the heavens. Now, uh, where I have gone out and stand over a city, I have stood over a, a nation, I would usually be um, as big as what I should be to see everything I need to see. Um, as I stood out in the, into the city, it wasn't just for Marapa. As a matter of fact, I stood out about, I said 2,000, maybe 2,500 feet. 
up in the air. I, I, I could have even been higher. Um, and as I stood in, and oh, as I stood over the, the, the city, I was standing right in the section where um, the meeting was held, but I could see um, almost all over the place. I could see in New Orleans, I could see um, part of the city, even beyond the city of New Orleans, I could see all the surroundings, Homer, I could see the Maripa, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, I could go all the way around, even to this section, yeah, and even further on. Right. I could see everything. And, and I realized while I was looking, um, as I was having this, this section of what I was seeing in my heart, I felt a darkness, um, or the awareness of the darkness. Um, not, not a good darkness, right? Because we've, we've only perceived darkness to be bad, but nowadays we begin to understand that darkness is actually more good. Uh, than what we've ever perceived it to be, especially because Yahweh presented himself in a dark cloud. All right. Because Yahweh also presented himself in a dark cloud at the death of Yeshua. Mm. But we thought it was demonic. Right. And every right. demonic entity was gathered, that's why it became dark. No, the Father was releasing mysteries and secrets, and he brought his full presence into that area. No, we don't understand that type of stuff because we are conditioned to believe that darkness is demonic. I don't know how, how, the, how the darker cultures feel about that. Yeah. Black is evil? Come on! White is good? That's right. That's ridiculous, right? White hands, black hands, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we need to begin to understand that Satan did not create anything. That's right. Right, right. and if there's anything uh, that we believe or perceive that it's Satan's, we immediately have to take it back. That's legislation. Yeah. Because right, right. If, if there's something out there that we believe is Satan's, it's perverse. He took what didn't belong to him and he perverted it. So it belongs to us. Yeah. We need to take it back and then we need to reconvert it to what it's supposed to be. That's right. Okay. Re legislate it. Re yes. So I'm, I'm, I can become aware of this dark cloud, darkness. And as I look up, um, it was extremely strange to look at. Because I'm still trying to figure out what I could describe it to, to have looked like. I started off saying that it was looked like a... Um, <laughs> no, I can't even remember what I thought it would look like. It was like a, it's like a dinosaur, one of those flying dinosaurs with the long beaks and the long... Pterodactyl. Pterodactyl, yeah. Okay, so I was looking and I, it felt like it looked like that, but it was, it was really, really just fat. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it had fat. It just looked like it was like a big, round... Thing. Okay. Right. But then it also kind of looked like a, a bat. Mm. That's the type of wingspan it had, but it, it was a little bit longer. It was almost completely round, but yet not completely. It had a, a lot of horns. It looked very aggressive, but also very playful. And it was hanging. Uh, and now that I go back and see it, it looks like it was... Because I kept on seeing it hanging on something, but my natural couldn't perceive how it could hang on something. It was in space. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it basically what it was, now that I go back in, I see that it was literally a crown, a massive mm. crown that he was holding on to. Mm. And it was just hanging, it was massive, it was covering this entire district. I, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And I've gone in to the, into the, the space area before with the Father to throw out a whole galaxy of stars. Um, Ian Clayton has a teaching where he literally gone into the galaxy with the Father to create a galaxy. Justin Abraham talks about the fact that the father told him to ignite a star. And the next day the newspaper said that we saw a star being born. All right. It was captured and it was him. Right. So there's, there's so much that we can do out there. And of course, um, through astronomy and the belief of uh, fortune telling, we as Christians have, have ran away from anything that is astron astronomy uh, based or close or near to anything that had got to do with the stars and the moon because we think it's demonic, right? That's right. So that's a hidden place yeah. for these demonic entities, the hidden place for the giants and dragons because we never go there. Our places, come okay, on. Okay, so the, the, the astronauts can go there, but we do not believe in spirit travel because that's demonic. Yeah. Because Satan is so powerful, only his uh, disciples can do it. Like the New Ages and, uh, and, and the, the Hindus and the Buddhists and no one else. You know, if yeah. you're a monk, you can travel in the spirit. You know? But if you're a Christian and you travel in the spirit, that's demonic and you need to repent or die. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right? And if that even sounds retarded as I say it. Come on now. Right? So we've taken back, and of course we have to understand that if there's a perversion out there, we have to take it back and reconvert it to the original. Yeah. Okay, so if I was designed to have the ability to live in the kingdom of heaven, I'm seated in Christ. Now, this is the reality. I'm seated in Christ, mm -hmm. in heavenly places, right, right now. now. Right now. Well, let me just quickly uh, rephrase this to you. I'm not. Yeah. I'm standing in front of you. This is what we see. This, so, so I have to understand in the largest logic of this word, the word. I'm Come in on. two places at the same time that you can't see. So there's that's a right. dimension of me yeah. that's in the spirit yeah. right now that you cannot see. Yeah. But the truth is that I'm in two different places. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm right here. My soul and my body is speaking to you. My spirit is seated in Christ in heavenly places. Yeah, yeah. So and yet we still in the same breath believe that we cannot travel in the spirit. You've been told that. That's right. As a matter of fact, the church will shut you down. Yeah. Right, don't no, come back. Not the church. Religion. Religion will Religion. shut you down. Okay, so we need to okay, so I'm standing, I'm standing there and I look at this thing and I just begin to understand that it has created a fear in the hearts of God's people. It has kept and stolen. Now I need you to understand in every one of these cities I've mentioned, we have either slain a dragon of some kind, multiple sometimes, or we have taken out some kind of a giant. All right. And much of the result of doing it has been flooding and storms and even snow. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Now, I know that this is an area where these things happen, but if you look at Denham Springs, when there was a flood, no one had flood insurance because there's never been a flood. flood. That's right. Okay? We're looking at the snow that took place. There hasn't been snow here in, in, in 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking at some of the areas that, that, that did flood, that it just doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, I, I say to you, even the things that I did in Cape Town while being in uh, America, after I did it, there was this massive storm. All right. Okay, so obviously there's a related uh, sign and wonder that comes with what we're doing. Now we have to also understand, we are still in a very premature uh, place, so there's a lot of uh, faults that we do, mistakes we make. Right. Yes. Because yes. in a legislation like this, or like what we have done, I would prefer no deaths. That's right. None. Right? So in our ignorance, we have not um, petitioned for everything as we have ought to. But we're growing yes. in it. And we're changing. Learning. And of course, the Father has a much bigger viewpoint than what we do. Yes. We look like this. He sees the entire picture uh, without space and time involved. That's right. So I look and I think, oh, come on, we made a big mess. And he's looking at the restoration. He's looking at the alignment. He's looking at the things now falling into place because what a mature, I say mature, but I'm still a baby, a, a mature a Christian have done, a son, a daughter has done in the earth. Right? We have changed and we have legislated things that's fallen into place. Yes. So I'm standing in this place and I, I, I feel massive. Right? I'm full of His Spirit, full of His power, full of His glory. I just came out of His heavens. Aaron, how are you doing, sir? Um, I, I'm full of His glory, and I can feel the heartbeat of the Father in me. And I'm standing up, and as I look up to this thing, I immediately know, as in a fact in my heart, He's never been seen before. That's why He was hanging, playing. He had all this authority, and I could see almost through Him, and in Him was billions of dollars, Diamonds, rubies, gold. I saw books, scrolls, revelation, lightning, fire. Uh, I see all kinds of phenomenal things. Amen. And what I would immediately have done in my normal and natural understanding of how this works, I would have been taken um, either by a might himself, depends on who I was walking with, or with one of the uh, other seven spirits into yeah. the court of war. I did go into the court of war and there was strategizing taking place, but it wasn't even with the um, uh, saints or, or the, or the angel, angelic or even of the cloud of witnesses. There was men that was actually still in the earth. There was men, men traveling into the spirit realm like I was traveling in the spirit man. We were engaging and they said that this is a very significant time. But what I understood is because of my destiny scroll, this section, they have been waiting for me. Men in the earth, waiting. mature side, have been waiting for me yeah. to do something specific because yeah. it was my task. It was on my scroll. It was for me to do. Open that portal. Come on. So as I was standing there, I realized what I needed to do, and I didn't have to go into the court of angels to get a legion of angels to come with me, or any angelic being assigned to me. I was taken back into the same position, in the same size, and I had a sword on my back. 
Mm. At my sword. Now, it's not the word of God like we perceive it in, in Ephesians. It's a gift that the Father gave me out of growth that has taken place in the kingdom of heaven. And I know it sounds like some kind of a fiction movie. But as the Father, I've used it a couple of times. I used it to cut open a, uh, I believe it was a fallen seraphim, which is a, a fiery serpent on Bourbon Street. I cut his belly open. I've used this sword to cut open bellies of giants and dragons over the last couple of months as the Father has elevated me to the next level of my walk. And I, guys, I listen to myself saying all these things that I'm thinking, oh my word, and I'm recording it. And it sounds absolutely crazy. But um, I'm standing right underneath him. And what usually happens if you cut open the belly of a giant or a dragon, all that falls out of him becomes yours. You take yes. it and you put it in your mountain and you trade for that nation or that city, that state. You trade for the people of God with that funds in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But this time the father in my heart, I know, so that's what he said. I just knew what I needed to do is I needed to cut open the valley and everything that falls out will literally rain over this region. Woo. So it will not be something that I take to trade. It will literally just rain. It will break open a dimension. And as that started raining over this region, um, those 12 lights that I saw became 12 beings mm. that was thrown from the heavens into these states, into these different places, yeah. um, stru st structural, um, pla structurally placed into specific positions over the area that I was looking at. Right. I, of course, at first I thought it was angels. But then as I began to look a little bit closer, I kept on thinking of Revelation 1, verse uh, 13, from verse 13. You guys want to, let me turn there quickly, let me turn there, I just push a couple of buttons on my iPad and I go there. And I kept thinking of the scripture while it was happening, so I realized it wasn't, it wasn't angels, it wasn't what I thought it was, it was what John saw. Mm, that's good. In the midst of all the, in the midst of the menorah, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed in a robe down to his feet, with a golden belt wrapped around his chest. Yeah, and just remind yourself, one like unto the Son of Man. Not the Son of Man. Okay, Jesus isn't like Jesus, he is Jesus. That's right. So whoever he saw was one like Not unto Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Like unto the Son of Man. So he had this golden belt wrapped around his chest. His head um, had hair, uh, his hair was white like wool, white like snow, and his eyes are like a flame of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnish. His voice was like the roaring of uh, rushing waters. In his right hand he had seven stars, seven spirits, which means he's walked with the seven spirits. Out of his mouth came forth a sharp two-edged sword. Now, Jesus is the two-edged sword. So out of Yeshua's mouth, it's not going to come a two-edged sword. Out of one like unto Yeshua, Amen. there's going to be a two-edged sword, right? Yes. Amen. His face was like the sun, shining at full strength. Mm. So, so have this, this picture in mind that I see these 12 lights coming down. And immediately I realized that the Father has established governance over this region with sons and daughters. Twelve represents governance. Yes, yes, yes. And then afterwards, when I finished what I was ministering on, the lady who runs that, that, that group and that company there, she comes to me and she says, well, that's exactly what the Lord has been telling her. As a matter of fact, they call themselves, um, or they are in the area they're in is, is called the Jewels of the Swamp. <laughs> um, because the Marapas right in the middle of the swamp. Yes. You know, there's, 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 everything's far away. There's nothing there. If, if I go there, uh, my wife gets a massage from her. Um, or a massage. But my wife gets worked on by this lady. And then myself and my son would go look for something to do. I mean, the closest place that has anything would be a 20 to 40 minute drive. <laughs> but she tells me about how things are happening, what the Lord has been telling her, and how this just is falling into place with everything. Yes. And then last night, no, not last night, on Tuesday night, while I was sharing this, I also started prophesying. But as I was speaking, I was taken back to um, a prophecy the Lord gave me regarding America. 
that it will not bring any form of fear to the, to the earth. As a matter of fact, it will be uh, held and done in secret. But it was a long process of uh, encounter that I had. But at the end, the father said to me that America will be taken over by a giant. Uh, it was, he told me this three years ago, four years ago already, and it was just held in my heart. I shared it with a couple of people. And then, of course, uh, uh, President Trump started uh, running for election. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Trump in himself was a giant, right? Yeah. And so I immediately thought, okay, and even the ones I shared with said, well, it's Trump. He's the one that will take over the country because he's a giant. And uh, after he became president, um, the father made it very clear to me that that's not the giant he was talking Sorry about. about. Mm. Now, I am not saying that the giant that will take over the nation is demonic. All right. I know this sounds crazy, and I'm not, I'm not trying to prophesy this to bring any form of fear, but in my understanding, there will be a giant that will take over the nation. Mm. It will be done in secret. No one will know. This is what the father said to me. It will bring great financial increase, great financial blessing. As a matter of fact, the world as we know it will change. We will immediately see a change. Uh, and, and things will slowly begin to change in America in a way that we, the, the earth, the world will not perceive. But the church will look at it and say, something is wrong. Mm. But as we begin to see this, things will draw us into a place of unity. Come and on. that will bring the church to a place where we will begin to take governance back as we ought to. Amen. Now this all fell into place after that happened. Because after that happened, all of a sudden, these um, 12 men... Now understand that if you are in that <laughs> dimension of light, you have walked with the Father, you are mature, yep. you have walked with the seven spirits, you yep. have mastered His word... You love His Word. It's a different dimension. I don't think I was at that level. My function at that point was just to cut open mm -hmm. and to, to do that, what needed to be done. To open up that porthole for them to come in and establish what needed to be established. And I believe, I believe that there's going to be a phenomenal change taking place. Now, that is, this is really all part of legislation. Yeah. You know, we think legislation will bring the kingdom of earth into, into um, or the kingdom of heaven into earth, right? That's, that's right. legislation, but yes, that's a measure of legislation. The slaying the dragon, taking the things that lie in the earth, is things that has never been done in the earth. All right. Never been done. All of a sudden, we started to do it, and things are changing. Guys have been working and struggling uh, spiritually in the quarters in, in New Orleans for years. Mm, that's All right. of a sudden, we're slaying dragons, doing things. There's a massive giant, giant and dragon slaying uh, over the last three or four years, and things are changing so rapidly that they've blown away. Yeah. Because there's legislation taking place. Yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, if I look at all the different states that we operate in, and of course not just us, I'm looking at Ian Clayton and Justin Abraham and coming into the states all the time. And this is just men I know, right? There's other people doing the same thing that's been trained and equipped by them. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm what you would call a, um, an understudy of uh, Justin Abraham, Ian Clayton, Mark, uh, um, uh, Stevie McGee, um, Grant Mahoney and Samantha, because they are my mentors. They are the ones that I looked up to and now I had to train and teach myself everything they're teaching. I had to go into it, I had to engage into it, and I'm teaching it, and as I'm teaching it, I'm growing. Yeah. Right. So they are at a level that are operating in different things. But there has to be somebody that breaks what they do into smaller portions for everyone else to understand. That's right. But every time a son is matured, he takes what he was taught, breaks it up into smaller portions for the next generation to perceive. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. as the, my sons and daughters begin to grow up, if you have listened to Rebecca teach, she takes what I teach, breaks it up into smaller portions the way she understood it, the way she understands it. And she breaks it up into smaller portions. It makes more sense. Yeah. And her sons and daughters are going to do the same thing and it's going to make even more sense. Yeah. It's meant to become more easier and more easier to do. But that's part of legislation. All right. That is what we do. That's the law of legislation is going into a place, living and operating in that space to such a degree that what is happening there attracts itself to you so that wherever you go, you literally take that with you and reestablish it wherever you go. Yes. The idea is... In the legislation the Father expects or desires from the Ecclesia is that we go into the kingdom of heaven, 
live there, move there, have our being there, have understanding and revelation, walk with the seven spirits, engage with the saints of old, allow the saints of old to give us their batons yeah. and their mantles. Yes. We, we receive mandates daily by the seven spirits, by the, sun, the saints in the heavens. Even the angelic, so they are messengers. Now I remind you that I'm busy giving you a message right now. Yes. Right? A message is not just, listen, God told me to tell you that this is what you need to do. That's not a message per se. That's not what the Father is talking about. They literally have revelation yeah. that they can teach to you. Yeah. Amen. Same with the 22 letters. As a matter of fact, the 22 letters in the Hebrew language is another dimension of revelation that the Father is longing for the ecclesia to go into. Because the more I know of my God, the more I understand who I am. Amen. The more I understand who I am, the more I can legislate the kingdom of heaven into the earth. Yeah. So the idea is, and, and we need to have an understanding of this, I have to have the kingdom of heaven attach itself to me. That's why the Bible says, and we've misread it, because this is what it actually says. It says, whatever, you, whatever is bound on earth, you can bind in heaven. But if you read that scripture in a different translation, it says it the other way around. Yes, yes. Whatever is bound in heaven, you can bind on earth. Yes. Whatever is bound in, in, uh, loose in heaven, you can loose on earth. Yes. So what we thought would be a good idea is we will go and bind Satan. Well, let me just say you quickly. Satan is not in the kingdom of heaven. All right. Come on, say that. Amen. So I don't big. go into the kingdom of heaven and bind Satan because I go into the kingdom of heaven to see what is already bound. Yeah, and he's not there. <laughs> and it's really not what I see. That's, it's what I see that I can bind to me. Yes. Because it's legislation. It's all about legislation. So I'm going to the kingdom of heaven. I, I have asthma. This is what I struggled with for many years. I go into the kingdom of heaven and I see that there's no sickness, no disease. I bind that, that understanding, that perception to my spirit. And legislate that back into the earth. It affects me in such a degree that I'm healed of asthma. No asthma. Amen. Because it's a legislation of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven Has legislated come. into the earth. There's no yes. sickness, there's no disease. Yes. That's why the Father's desire for us to, to grow to such a, a multitude, magnitude, that we no longer pray for those who have cancer. That's it. But we pray against cancer. Right. Because what if a son and a daughter, because if one can take down a thousand, two can take down ten thousand, that we have ten people in this room, how can we begin to understand how much a company of people can legislate from the kingdom of heaven to the earth? Yes. How many angelic activity can we have in the earth just through legislation? Yes. Just through a sons and daughters perceiving the fullness of his glory and running with it. Come on. See, his desire for us is to take that which is in the heavens and to bind it to. That's why I bind the seven spirits to me. Uh -huh. And I bind them to me with the understanding that it takes me 21 days to, to break our habit or to change um, a um, way of thinking. So for 21 days I walk with wisdom and she will teach me things and it will change the way I think, yes. change the way I perceive. Now is she going to come with me? Probably not. But I can stay in the kingdom of heaven as a spirit being, because my spirit being is in the image of Yahweh, so I can multiply into many, many different attributes and aspects of the kingdom of heaven. I remember sitting in my chair the other day <coughs> in the garage. No, help me, Jesus. But there's an aircon in there now, so it's really nice. It's the most quiet place in my house. It's got the big, big door, which is not that quiet. You can hear the cars go by, but that doesn't bother me. And it's got a double door because it's got the um, laundry, it's a laundry door, and then another door that closes and goes into the kitchen. So it's really double. You can't hear what the kids are doing in the room, you know. And of course, America don't have walls. They have little paper plates. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm used to the cement bricks that have walls. So you can't hear the conversation in the other room. But the garage is really working well. I'm doing some of the videos there that the father's asked me to start doing. So that's kind of going well. But I'm sitting in the chair, and uh, I was just engaging with Joshua. I know you guys, I know that's weird, but I was sitting there, and I said to the Father, I really just want to spend time with Joshua. He was really intrigued me. He's an in incredible saint of old. Yes. And while I was really engaging with him, I became aware of what my spirit was doing all over the kingdom of heaven. All the different things I was doing, and then even what I was doing in the earth while I was sitting in this chair, engaging, uh, of course, I'm engaging in Christ, through Christ, and engage with, 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 uh, 
Joshua. Joshua. He was actually prophesying all kinds of phenomenal things over me. He was infusing a knowledge because I drank of his wine. It was an incredible time, but I saw my spirit doing so many multiple different things. Yes. And uh, most of it, it's really, and, and I've said this before, don't let your soul tell you you shouldn't be doing this stuff when you're in the kingdom of heaven. You should be worshiping God. Come on, come because on. Because we were taught that one day, when we die, we're going to worship God for 24 hours a day. Yeah. So 99% of all Christians think, oh my God, I can't die. I'm going to have to stay alive because I can't even worship the 20 minutes in church. How am I ever going to worship for an eternity every day? Yeah. I can't do it. I don't even think I can keep my arms up for that long. Right? Because we have that perception. That's worship. But worship is the engagement into the, that which the Creator created. Amen. Right? And I've said that before. I go to a restaurant, I eat the food. I say thank you to the waiter or the waitress. She didn't cook the food. He didn't cook the food. That's right. Right? But immediately, whether the, 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 the um, chef is there or not, when I say I enjoyed the food, I give praise to the, wait, uh, to the, to the cook. Chef, chef, that's right. I give praise to the chef. No matter what I do, no matter how, even if I call him out and say, thank you, the food was delicious. Everything I do in that restaurant that has to do with the food he cooked brings praise to him. That's right. So when I'm in the kingdom of heaven, no matter what you're busy doing, you're giving praise to him. You're worshiping him. And it's really a perception we need to change, you know, because we want this to be worship. Yeah. The snot dripping out of your nose. Tears running your mascara and your makeup, ladies, hopefully, yeah. all over your face, uh, you know, and snicky. <laughs> you know, that's what we see as worship. Yeah. But that, that's not worship, right? I mean, it's yeah. worship, yes, sure. Most of the time, it's repentance of some sin that happened during the week. Yeah. It just looks really good. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> but worship is who you are. Yes. yes. It is. Right? It's what you eat of. That's why it says, eat of me, drink of me. me. Yeah. Yes. You know, so whatever he created, if I partake into it, I'm eating of it and drinking of it. Yeah. I'm taking of him. Yeah. 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 Right? Even in, in loving and conversation with someone I don't meet, I've never met, or I, I, I just met and started talking to. Yeah. I'm eating and partaking of him. Yes. Yeah. You know, something very strange happened to me, and I want to go too much off of but uh, on uh, Tuesday, Margie, you'll enjoy that, you were there. I'm really teaching on the Spirit of Wisdom. And uh, it was pretty incredible. I really enjoyed it. It was phenomenal. And I always measure my own teachings at, at how much I like them. <laughs> if I liked them, it was good. If I didn't like them, I didn't, I didn't, then it wasn't so good. <laughs> I teach to myself. The ones who's there, they, they're just in the right place, the right, the right time. Yeah. But it's usually for myself. But uh, I did not go to the bathroom. So on my way there, I, on my way home, I realized I need to go wee-wee right now. So of course, the garage I choose isn't open. I stop, I get out the car, and as I walk towards the door, there's still people in there, but there's a man standing on the outside, dressed in black, has a beer in his hand, a cigar in his hand, missing teeth. He looks a little bit homeless, but he wasn't homeless. He looks at me and he says, Yahweh has 10 men that walks with wisdom. I look at him. Well, those people. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, like, I'm in shock. Yeah. I'm like, I just need to go to the bathroom. And he says, well, I'm sorry, you can't, it's closed. All right, it's my sister and I'm waiting for her to come out and I'm not allowed to let you in. So I don't know what happened because I got in my car and I left. I didn't see anybody come out. I didn't see it closed. It was a, I don't understand. I was just like, I need, I need revelation on that. That was pretty freaky, right? You <laughs> 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 changed your mind about going to the bathroom. Uh, yeah. You got your mind well, yeah, I couldn't wait until I got home because I was crying. and Not really. It was actually me wanting to go to the bathroom. My eyes were leaking. I was sweating. <laughs> I thought it was urine. <laughs> Sorry, that's too much detail, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, if I had to share this testimony with Mike Barnett, he would have immediately told me it was an angel. It was those people, that's right. And I remember, I remember doing something one day. Um, I walked into Walmart, but I came back out because I saw two people sitting there. 
And I walk up to them and I said the most ridiculous thing. As a matter of fact, once I said it, I said, Oh my God, what did I do? What have I done? But I knew I had to do it because that's what the Lord put in my heart. So I said to them, Listen to me. What do you guys need? Today, I want to buy you whatever you want. I don't have that much money in the bank. So I'm thinking, 50 inch screen TV, iPhone, iPad, <clears throat> what have I done? And I made it very clear to them because I felt the utterance of the Spirit that I needed to give them this option and say, listen, whatever you guys need, mm -hmm. I want to be the one supplying it to you today. What can I do for you? And she says, I just want a bag of lays. I'm thinking, okay, wait. <clears throat> Let me explain this to you again. You can have whatever you want. I feel in my heart that Yahweh, my God, has told me to give you the option that whatever you want today, I want to go in there and buy you. So she looks at me and she says, okay, I want a bag of legs. And she tells me the flavor. Potato chips. Potato chips. I'm like, okay. And I look at him and I'm like, well, what do you want? And he says, I just want a six pack of beer and a packet of cigarettes. And I'm like, well, what type of beer and what type of cigarettes? You know, you know. And I'm like, you guys need to understand this. anything you want. No, that's what we want. Matter of fact, I don't even think he had beer. He just wanted the cigarettes. So I'm like, well, this is uh, cheap. I can go do that. <laughs> <laughs> I go out. I come back. I give it to them. I, and I also put a $20 on a, um, a little Walmart card. And I leave, and I've never seen them again, ever. I shared that with Mike, and he says, it was angels. And of course, my first question, well, why would an angel want cigarettes? <laughs> yeah, deal with your religious spirit. Absolutely. Get you out of your box. Yeah, get you out of your box. I like it. See, we need to, we need to begin to see what the Father has given us, what is out there. Amen. Because legislation is absolutely key for sons and daughters. Mm. That which needs to be legislated into the earth is way beyond what we can even begin to fathom. Okay. Understand? It's not just about bringing joy into the earth. It's not about bringing sickness and disease, casting out demons. Yes, it's, all, it's about salvation and it's about healing the sick and going into the streets and preach the gospel. Yes, of course, but, but there's a higher dimension that leads us to doing that. There's yeah. legislation that takes place first mm -hmm. to restore and to bring things into place because now we're working against the grain and we are getting beaten up, flubbed, and literally abused. All right. But when we align things with legislation, that which I bring out of the kingdom of heaven to the earth, it becomes easier. I look at the work that was done seven years ago in, in New Orleans and how they were struggling. I look at the specific how they were beaten up, rejected, pushed away, kicked aside. Of course, there was a greater dimension of religion then than what there is now. To return or burn. I don't know how that could ever possibly have worked. But <clears throat> that's what we perceive to be right. Now it's happening in a completely different manner. Yes. Things have been aligned. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, it might not even, complete restoration might not even have taken place yet, but it's so much easier. If I listen to the ones working on the streets, yeah. uh, things have changed. Yes. Major change has taken place. Amen. Because all of a sudden the labor is no longer so intensive. Because it's been legislated from the heavens into the earth, so things are aligned. Yeah. Now we're starting to do things in a different way. That's right. Instead of having to tell someone about Jesus, they come up to you and say, what is it with you? What is it about you? Yeah. Woo. Yes. What is that shine? Tell me. Well, do you know Jesus? No, but I want to know him. That is what he represents. Amen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> woo. There's, there's so much that we just think is not possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then there'll be a day where your shadow will yeah. heal the sick. And that's already happened. Yeah. But I'm just walking up to somebody, and he couldn't walk. He jumps out of his wheelchair to run to me. So what is it about you? What's, what just happened? I knew that something in you healed me. Amen. So we just want to go and lay hands on the sick. Because that's what the Bible says. Yeah. But what does the Bible not say? A whole bunch. Right. A whole bunch is not said that could be. Yep. 
A lot of the opposites that we're not looking at is right there in front of us. Greater. Amen. Right? Look at it. Go into it. That's legislation. Legislate what's not there into place. It's the same as with the law of creation. It's very similar to the law of legislation. All right. How are you guys doing? Good. I don't know how the Lord took that encounter and engaged it into the law of legislation. But I basically shared that encounter and it took me 50 minutes. <laughs> I, I uh, haven't even opened my notes yet. We're still at, at the scripture. But let me close with this. For the anxious longing of creation, of the creation, waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers in pains of childbirth together until now. The whole universe is groaning, waiting and calling for us as his children, every one of us, God's sons of light. Listen to this, I want to, I want to read this as well. And John 12 says, While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become sons of the light. Yes. Yes. Our scientists has already proven that if you can operate at the speed of light, you will live outside of time and outside space. Time. Come on. So understand that when we live in Christ, we're living in the light, we're operating outside of time and space. That's another law that we'll be doing. Frequency. Come on. But outside of time and space is where legislation takes place. Yes. Where we have the authority over the sun and the moon. Oh, where good. age and sickness and disease is not part of us because we get sick and we grow older because we're under the sun and the moon. That's right. And the legislation that's taking place nowadays, we move away from that and we start taking dominion over the sun and the moon. So it doesn't affect right. us right. in growing older, becoming what it's not supposed to be. Because we are restoring things. Sin can no longer have hold. And sin is what brought things out of alignment. Amen. So it's time for the sons to understand the law of legislation and to bring it into full fruition. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Exciting, right? Let's stand. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Father, we just want to absolutely glorify and magnify your beautiful, majestic names. You are a mind-blowing God. And Father, we want to thank you. I know that I just shared some testimonies, things that I've done, and I know I want to... Blow my own horn yet, Father. I just wanted to bring an example. And I know that even some in this room have done some and legislated some phenomenal things already in the earth. I know Apostle Ball has explained and expressed some things he's done in the Spirit. That there's still a lot of revelation that will come to. He's got a key and there's so much that can still be done. Yes, um, Father, there's so much of us even in this room that's beginning to have revelation regarding the angelic and beginning to walk in the things. And it's exciting. So, so, Father, we don't yes. want to just look at what I've done and say, oh, wow, that's so, so great. We need to understand that it's, it's just an example. And everybody in this room has the ability and the capacity to begin to do things because of what's written on our scrolls. Thank you, Father. That's why your destiny scrolls key to you. And probably the next step, uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, you need to go fetch it. So, Thank Father, you. we ask that you will begin to open us up for this. Thank you will redirect our steps so we can start running and walking and, and propelling ourselves deeper into the things that you've opened up for us. My King, we love you, we praise you, I thank you for your, for your beauty, your spiritual power, your fire. I thank you, Lord, that we can live in you, that we can love on you. Thank you. We can step thank into you. you and we begin to, to eat of you and drink of you and, and measures and levels that we've never had available to us. Father, going into the dark, secret places of Yahweh, where mysteries and, and secrets are being revealed to sons and daughters yes. daily. Yes, yes. Walking in new revelations, deeper things in thank the Spirit. You. Father, we thank you for it. We love you, my King. Thank I pray for favor over everyone in this room. I pray for revelation, insight, knowledge regarding everything we do. I ask, Father, you'll open up our hearts and pour into us all that we need. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. <laughs>